I need to move this over so I can see that, yes, I am recording. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to start the podcast. Hmm. Uh, and explain why we're looking at this tube. Yes. So, hello and welcome to, uh, well, there's your problem. A podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Um, potentially sponsored by the Bloomberg Foundation. We don't know yet. He, he still hasn't contributed to the Patreon. Give us your fucking money, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Give us your yeah. money. We'll say nice things about you if you give us your money. <laughs> the only way to deal with us Bernie bros is just to just pay us the money. Pay us the money. You gotta buy us off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he. And him, that's me. Uh, I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. My pronouns are she and her. I'm also on a podcast called Trash Future. It's very good. You should listen to that. And I'm sorry I have been so slow at captioning the previous episodes on YouTube. It's a lot of work, and the APT one is two hours long. Oh. And yeah, I just I'll, I'll get it done eventually. Inshallah. If we if we had that Bloomberg money. We could hire yeah. someone to do it quicker. Yeah, we could get an intern. We should get an intern to do that. Give us your money, Mike. Oh, that's a good idea. Give us your money, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last, I am Liam Anderson. I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. My pronouns are he, him. And uh, I am back from my girls' weekend. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I am ready to talk about uh, engineering failures. Uh, but on a personal <laughs> note, uh, I would like to wish uh, Megan Burke a happy birthday, and also that no one can ever ask me for shit again. God, I'm retired. <laughs> you, you, you did. You fulfilled all of your like feudal obligations in Maryland. Yes. 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 Uh, Baltimore is a great city. Uh, absolutely, but, but very dear and dear to my heart, just because almost more than Philly, just an entire like trash heap come to life. Mm. I love and it. You, you can also, I suppose, say "Go Birds" and mean the Ravens. No, fuck the Ravens. Listen, I like York, <laughs> Pennsylvania is fifty miles north of Baltimore. I had to deal with Ravens fans as a kid. I fucking hate Ravens fans. Uh, you can't. I'm not going to hear about how Ray Lewis is actually a good guy. Go to hell. <laughs> you know, I only said that just to irritate you, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, tell me about the tube. We're looking at a rather. Ugly looking cast iron pipe. Oh, I think it's pretty. You think it's pretty? It's this. This was the thing that Grover sunk in to like tap into the municipal <laughs> sewer, right? Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> no. Today, today we're going to talk about really a wide variety of things, which all sort of fit into the concept of the atmospheric railway. And 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 one thing I want to I want to st- note before we begin. This is a disclaimer. So a lot of people like go into comments and they accuse us of just cribbing from the Wikipedia page, right? Fucking assholes. We don't do that. We don't do I didn't even I don't bother to read the Wikipedia page. I <laughs> just make this shit up <laughs> as I go along. Yeah, and it's like uh, oh, you know, like sometimes Wikipedia is a good place to start for research. Um but like, you know, a lot of people said that about a Quebec Bridge episode and I was like, fuck you. Fuck you, yeah. and your fucking yeah. Fuck, fuck you, fucking fucks, yeah. Yeah. That spent a long time on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you accuse me of doing research? I just do drinking, and I get Justin to do the research. Uh, well, yeah, uh, exactly. Thank you, beast of burden. This is mm. called division of labor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things about the atmospheric railway is that the best source of information on this uh, subject really is the Wikipedia page. There's not a lot of information online. Look, you gotta like look for rare books if you wanna find. You find... don't wanna like dive into like a bunch of leather bound volumes and like have to fucking pass a library use check like Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, I have. Mm-hmm. I have to like. <laughs> I have to like go into the restricted section of the library mm. of Harry Potter to find more more. Read another book. <laughs> the, on, the only actual diagrams of atmospheric railways are in the Vatican secret archives for some reason. Uh, <laughs> right up there with how Pope Pius XII yeah. didn't prevent the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the real, the real, the real trick to getting into the Vatican secret archives is the only security measure is a guy explaining to you that secret just means private rather than secret in the modern sense for an hour. And once you listen to that guy, you're in. Yeah, I can sit through that. I don't care. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. It sounds more <laughs> pleasant than the Vatican Museum. That place is a trash heap. 
It's just full of <laughs> there's too many fucking people in there. <laughs> yeah. There is. Oh yeah. god, there is. Oh, no. just, I, I, I feel like this they is a funnel thing you with into like, the Sistine Chapel at the end, and like there's so uh, many fucking people in there. It's like you can't appreciate anything. All I wanted I feel to like see, this is a I just wanted to see the School of Athens. That was the only mm. thing I wanted to see, and it was like right at the end. And I was like, wow, I suffered through all of that shit just so I could look at this one painting, which I kind of like. <laughs> that, that, that's the one with the philosophers talking and walking, right? Like, yes, they use in memes for like smart conversations. Yeah, but we have um, a school of Athens I, here in South Philly. Yeah, there hmm. is a South Philly school of Athens. I, I feel like this <laughs> is a problem with all holy sites, though. Like, yep. if you look at the Ganges or what well, we talked about Mecca previously, is just there's too many people. It's too crowded. You know what's you next? Gotta, you gotta. Hmm. I went on birthright. Sorry in advance. Um, no. And <laughs> uh, cancelled. Yeah, I went. So I go. So obviously the Western Wall is like bobbed, and you know there's security everywhere, and everyone's real mad at you for taking a picture on your cell phone. Uh, because it's Sabbath and God's pissed or whatever, even though it doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that I can't take a picture with my cell phone. Uh, <laughs> Why would it say and, that? And, you know, it says you can't push a button. <laughs> that, 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 that's like the ultra orthodox figured this out. You can't yeah, push you buttons. Can't that's do why they work. have. And that's you, why yeah. they have that weird like elevator. Oh, uh, oh, I love the elevator. Sabbath mode. Yeah. Yeah, it's why they have the oven setting for for when you like program it in advance because you can set a machine to do work for you ahead of the Sabbath, but not do work yourself on the Sabbath, right? Anyway, so, I hmm. went to the Church of the Holy <laughs> Sepulchre uh, to take pictures for my Catholic girlfriend. Uh, suck it, mom! And it was not crowded <laughs> at all. I walked, I breezed right into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and walked around for like the twenty minutes I had. And no one, you know, yelled at me yeah, about taking a picture on my cell phone. What, what, what year was it? Well, what time of year was it, though? Because if you go at Easter, summer. Yeah, well, mm, but when in summer? Because if it's Easter, you're going to have to push a bunch of Greek dudes out of the way with, like, at your elbows. Yeah, that's what I do on a daily basis anyway. I'm just like, <laughs> give, me, give me your lamb heroes, get the fuck out of my way. I'm trying to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I've been cancelled again. <laughs> yeah. A, a offensive teams coordinator against the Greek <laughs> diaspora. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks. What? Cyprus is not yours. <laughs> yeah, it's part of it's part of Al Al Islam is <laughs> why. <laughs> so, so we will have a future podcast with that will focus on interfaith dialogue. But Oh uh, yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're serious, motherfuckers. <laughs> in, in the meantime, we need to address the uh, the issue at hand, which is yeah, the this big fucking railway. tube. Yeah. yeah. Why are we looking tube. at this tube with some? Why are we looking at the suck tube with some <laughs> dirt in it? So the thing about uh, you know steam locomotives, right? Such as this mm. one on the screen, which has a lot of JPEG compression. Is, oh yeah, buddy. Look at all those <laughs> pixels. <laughs> Look, uh, the the pixels they, they build character. So <laughs> there's some problems with steam locomotives, right? Yeah, you can you can use them for like making silent movies where they fall into a like a ravine, but you can only do that once. Yes. Uh, but like, okay, so your steam locomotive, right? There's not necessarily a lot of grip on the wheels, you know, it's steel on steel, right? So you can't climb hills too well. Um hmm. the size of the wheels limits the speed it can go as well as some of the mechanical features, like the side rods. It has to haul this big, heavy boiler around that's full of water. Uh, has to haul around all the fuel in the tender. Guy, yeah. guy with a shovel has to haul that guy around too. And then either union rep. Yeah. Individual yeah. union reps. <laughs> the sort of loading gauge, which is the maximum size of the vehicle, uh, limits the size of the engine, so that limits power. Right, so you can't just have like a mile long boiler. The the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad experimented with uh, engines with very long articulated boilers. Ah, oh, that's so cool! Oh, bendy boilers. Uh, yeah, as a bend, it it didn't work very well. <laughs> oh, as you as as you might expect. <laughs> <laughs> so they really did try the. Why don't yeah. they just make the whole train out of the boiler? <laughs> Props to them for creativity, Ugh. but um, <laughs> it did not work. So, what if you take this whole engine, and when mm -hmm. I say engine, I mean the boiler, and then like you know the the parts that convert that energy into mechanical energy. What if you take that off the rails, right? 
Then literally or metaphorically? Uh, yeah. Literally. <laughs> So you, 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 your train doesn't move because there's no engine. But wait, <laughs> you have a little bit of you have something to propel it otherwise, right? So you mm -hmm. know if you take the engine off the train itself, the engine can be as big as you want. You can have lighter and faster and generally like more nimble trains, right? Uh huh. And today we do this through electric traction, right? Like mm. third rail or overhead lines or something like that. S still, still witchcrafts. Uh, it's sin against like the original uh, design of having a big locomotive with a big dumb engine on it. Obviously, we're we're all going to hell. Oh to God, bud. Yeah, yeah. We we don't understand electric traction. We yeah, don't, <laughs> we don't respect it at all. <laughs> Stop being a coward. Put the engine in the train. Yes. <laughs> so the Victorians though didn't have electricity, right? Mm -hmm. At least the early ones. Yeah, they were they, they, they were too busy like covering up table legs and like doing seances and shit, mm -hmm. like w making weird pornography that survives to this day for some reason. So you can go look at some lithographs of like, oh, just weird shit. An ankle, <laughs> one single ankle, just uh, turned up in the woods, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, since the Victorians didn't have electricity, they couldn't have a third rail or an overhead line, so they tried something a little bit different, mm -hmm. which was the atmospheric railway. Now, there are some early developments for an idea like this in around 1824, uh, which is like the basic idea of, you know, you have like a tube, right? Mm. This is a cross-section I'm doing. <laughs> and then you have a train <laughs> inside the tube, right? I put it I put a T on it for train, <laughs> but this is lowercase T for tube. Right? Aha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incredibly advanced diagram skills. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and of and, course you know, of course you can do this with like a, a tunnel with I guess no air in it, because they already yeah. thought that if you went over thirty five miles an hour, everybody would just like explode. Shake out of their from, bodies, yeah. As you do. Yeah. Sure. So the the idea was you'd create a vacuum with the steam engine in the tube, a stationary steam engine, and that would draw the train through the tube, right? This is an early yeah. idea. There wasn't, you, you couldn't really, you, the technology did not exist at the time to do that, right? Um, no. What you, know, you, what just, you could do, what you could do is you could still have this idea of having a stationary power source that's pulling a train through a tunnel. You just use a really long rope, which is what the Glasgow subway did until like 1970. Yes, and that's what uh, that that's cable cars in San Francisco too, and all mm -hmm. over uh, America and Europe. Um, Cape cable yeah. hauled systems were pretty common, yeah. It's it, it's a stupid idea, but it's a hell of a lot more practical than this. <laughs> yes, but uh, so you know this this early idea was by a man named Valance, and I can't find out any in other information about it behind this, right? Um, but the principle of operation here is the air pressure difference moves the uh, vehicle. Yeah, just it, it sucks it. Like we're not joking yeah. when we do the suck jokes. It just right, goes. Right. <laughs> Because Victorians <laughs> un understand vacuum quite well, because it's relatively easy to create with the technology they have available to them. Yes, um, they just it, it just I guess you each passenger gets like an individual fishbowl <laughs> helmet. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, everyone, get on the suck. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's problems with like having a really big tube, right? That's expensive. It's hard to maintain. We'll get to like big tubes later. So they came up with the new idea, right? Um, which is instead of having a big tube with the train inside, what if we have the train outside the tube? Again, capital T for train. And then there's a small tube underneath, right? Hmm. And then any of the wheels, any of the rails, like this. And then that's the small tube, and then, and then you just have like a piston that comes down from the train, right, and is in that tube, and then you can um, alter the air pressure in the small tube, and then that will move the train, right? S seems seems sensible, yeah. I suppose. Right. 
So this is like something which is difficult with modern materials, just because you're maintaining this very <laughs> oh, j- j- long, just own me in the next sentence, why don't you? <laughs> very, you're maintaining this very, very long, like miles long valve, in mm. order to keep the vacuum right. So, uh, but you know, the Victorians were like, "Nah, we can probably do this. We'll be fine." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have six guys with hammers, and we're gonna we're gonna fucking make this vacuum that yes. goes for like up and down valleys and shit. <laughs> yeah, great. So there was Jacob and Joseph Samuda, right? They were shipbuilders by trade, mm. right? And they came up with a system in 1841 for an atmospheric railway, right? Using this concept of the small tube. With the piston in it, right? Which is what this big diagram is, and I'm going to explain uh, this. The, the the 19th century, when you could just like have like a side hustle when you were a shipwright, but you could also in your spare time just invent a railway. You can't do that these days. You can't be like an Uber driver who like in their spare time just invents a maglev. No, with that attitude. In the Victoria hmm. era, in the Victorian era, like anyone who could do like a nice looking in like diagram with like cross hatching was like taken seriously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean it's, it's the same thing with like any other profession. Like engineering, we you know, we can think of that one, but like you could just be a doctor just by like saying you were. It rules. We should go back to that. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, that would definitely delegitimize the professional managerial class. <laughs> mm, which yeah, is what so, we're all so, here for, yeah. Do, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Anderson, Dr. Rosniak, and Dr. Caldwell Kelly, uh like uh, on scene here. Doctor. Doctor. Mm. Doctor. 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 <laughs> I mean, the first saw prototype was designed by two guys, one of whom designed wings and one of whom designed bomb racks. And they've been cars for like 60 years, so... Yeah? Well, I, yeah. I'll, I'll raise you another one, which is that a doctor invented the chainsaw. Did you know? Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes surgery a lot more effective. Yes, because it's mo- it's very effective at sawing bone, and so it was just like a hand cranked chain with a bunch of saw blades on it, uh, and people just upscaled that when they needed to cut down trees. It's great. So w- what I'm saying is, bring back that kind of interdisciplinary <laughs> innovation you get when nobody has to have any qualifications to do anything. All right, give me your give me your arm. We're gonna test this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some skin, man. You just accidentally yank off this dude's whole fucking wrist. It's fine. It's fine. It'll right. buff out. All right, so let's talk about the, the Samuda uh, system for the atmospheric railway. Okay, so this is kind of a, a Looney Tunes sort of system, right? Hmm. All right. You know, so you have this continuous vacuum tube, which is this pipe here, right? You mm-hmm. notice there's yeah. like a smaller outline here. Those are like these reinforcing doohickeys here. Okay, so... On top is this two inch groove, right? Which is, you know, open. This is your continuous valve, right? It, it may, is it just Victorian manufacturing that it looks so uneven? Like, it looks like something you've stripped all of the paint off, but then, like, there's some plastic where you think there's metal and it just blisters. Well, you gotta remember it's 180 years old. Ah, okay. It's doing right. its best, Alice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. In, or- in order to seal this valve when the train is not there, you have an iron plated leather flap. So oh, in the boy. middle where there's this different cross hatching <laughs> is the leather, right? <laughs> that sounds safe. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And yeah. this was he- this was opened and closed by a series of um wheels which are on the train, right? And the train, that sort of assembly is all of this up here, right? Aha. Uh-huh. So it opens the flap as it goes past and then closes it behind it. Yes. Nice. And and, and in the in the course of doing that, you keep the big tube airtight-ish. Yeah, I mean you're gonna have a little bit of leakage, but like it's not enough that it's a very long vacuum tube, so you know it's uh you can probably handle that small amount. Yeah. That'll be fine. There's a lot of suck, yeah. There's a lot of suck there, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just what you what you don't want to do is put your hand in this. No. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I no, should not do that. <laughs> so this is about to get pretty weird in a second. Um, so you know the piston inside the tube is drawn forward by atmospheric pressure. You know, so this whole assembly is on like a special 
locomotive at the front of the train, but like really it's just the piston inside the pipe. You can you can't really see how the piston is oriented here. Um, but like it has the whole it, the whole thing is the size of the inside of the pipe. I, I'm raising my hand here to indicate that I have a question. Yes, that that means uh, that means no controls to speak of, right? Like it, you just you have you have brakes. Um, um, okay, and the brakes are able to hold the train against this like vacuum force. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a shame. I was envisioning this when you said Looney Tunes. I was envisioning this as just like <laughs> once you're on, once you're on, once it's sucking, and you know, once you nut, it keeps sucking. Uh, <laughs> you, you are getting to the next station regardless, so long as that <laughs> vacuum holds. <laughs> so the um the loose end of of this iron plated leather flap like right around here i need to switch colors at this point mm. jesus okay so let's go with blue so the, the mm. loose end here right right about there this is covered in a mixture of beeswax and tallow tallow is animal <laughs> fat right yeah the thing they used to make mcdonald's fries good with and yes. now they're not anymore Goddamn vegans. <laughs> anyway. The fuck- I, I blame Bloomberg for this, somehow. Uh, Thanks for nothing, yeah, we'll Mike. Fucking- That's yeah. not gonna help but, us get a sponsorship. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> if he gets us the sponsorship, we will stop talking shit about his, like, jihad against big gulps, or you're whatever. Have, you're gonna have to use that bleep function now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, sorry, sorry to suggest that Mike Bloomberg is- <laughs> <laughs> With Jeffrey Epstein on Jeffrey Epstein's plane doing <laughs> <laughs> We like to have fun here. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Alright, so this gets weirder, right? So I, I believe so there's a copper heating element, right, which is ten feet long on the uh on the on the locomotive, right? Which I believe is what this thing is, right? And the idea is, the mixture of beeswax and tallow is solid at normal atmospheric temperature, but if you heat it a couple degrees up, it melts, right? Oh. So the idea is this heating element melts the tallow before the wheel picks up the thing, right? Sure. And then, when it puts it back down afterwards, it reseals and maintains the vacuum, right? So th sure. this, this 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 railroad, you're telling me that it's I assume basically silent because there's no engine anywhere near you. Um yes. but it smells amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you just you just have like a I guess like a kind of like barbecue vibe off of it, maybe with some like honey mixed in. You just like somebody's like cooking ribs up front. It's a giant deep fat fryer railroad, yeah. <laughs> and of course, the other thing is, you know, we we don't have electricity. This is not an electric heating element. This is this heating element is being run off a stove or something, oh, right? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. There's just there's just a guy up front in the cab whose only controls are a brake and a stove on which he can like I don't know make pancakes or he's something. Making, he's making burgers up there uh, up front and he's serving to the passengers. <laughs> So the first <laughs> dining car powered train. It's it's like a combined uh, like cafe car power unit. That's wonderful. Well, listen, the, the fat draining off the uh, the grill is uh, what's keeping this train running. You guys better keep eating. You don't eat, we don't go. <laughs> so this this whole this whole assembly is covered by. I believe this is the weather flap here. Right, uh, so all of that is all of that covers the actual valve and everything that keeps the weather out. That means the you know stuff doesn't get soaking wet, mm. and just, you don't get you don't get crap in the tube because that's yes. a big two inch like <laughs> opening uh, oh, yeah. into which like people can throw stuff, people, stuff can fall in, they can get leaves in there, uh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so. As complex as this system is, it's still less complex than the steam locomotive, right? Um, mm, you know, yep. it's it's complex in goofier ways, but <laughs> you, you aren't having well, you're having to maintain the fire on a stove instead of a, an enormous boiler <laughs> boiler that can just fucking explode. Yes, all all of the pressure, all of the pressurized vessel is well away from like 
people unless you put your hand in it, which again, <laughs> do not put your hand in the atmospheric <laughs> railway. Don't no. please keep your hands inside <laughs> the vehicle at all times. <laughs> <laughs> This now that we understand this system at least a little bit better, sure. um, let's let's talk about the first installation, which was the Dalkey Atmospheric Railway. Right, this is 1892. Right, it's designed by Jacob Samuda because his brother died. Um, <laughs> yeah, F. R. I. P. Yeah, F. So it it ran from what is now called. Uh, oh God. Dun, I, I'm, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> no. Is it Dun Laguerre? <laughs> Dun Lara. Dun Lara. Look, I, this is, I don't know. You I don't do it just Irish. that, but no, <laughs> point, point, point. Yeah, all right. Too dalky, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, want, I want to fuck with you there by just being like, actually, it's pronounced like Duclune. Dalky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's actually pronounced Duquesne. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> me? Where am I? <laughs> I, I it's the, the, the one thing about this podcast is, is so uh, a lot of times when, when, when Liam and I are in a car driving somewhere, of course, we, we listen to Lions Led by Donkeys. Mm. It's a very good podcast. Great podcast. And, and, and the, ho the host uh, frequently grossly mispronounces a word. Hmm. And they just they just gloss over it and keep going. It's like entirely opposite energy to yeah, what we no, do, we, which we is we dwell on it for ten minutes. Tools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, in your defense, uh, Dune Lara is one of those towns which, like Irish people, find difficult to pronounce. Uh, if you. Dun. Yeah, it, it, people say that it's like because the anglicized pronunciation, which like half of people use, is Dun Leary. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, but if you want to try and pronounce it in Irish, uh, you can either do like Dunlera, which is probably the closest thing to a consensus, or you can just fucking say some fucking syllables. <laughs> you can say fucking anything. <laughs> Dunlera. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just toss in four more, more letters. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when your language is so brutally repressed by the English that like four guys have to reinvent it in 1929. Uh, it's not ideal. I uh, just want to say triumph to Sinn Féin. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, and the other thing is, of course, when this railroad was built, this was called Kingstown. Um, yes. Well. yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so well, we, we, we fixed that by making it unpronounceable. Uh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> now no one can talk about it. Uh, all right, so this so it's an atmospheric railway, and it ran uphill to Dalkey, right, which is where the pumping station was, somewhere around here, right. Um, the idea was you ran the pump; it started uh, operating about five minutes before the train left, and that created fifteen inches of vacuum. That's referring to inches of mercury, right, which is an old old pressure mm -hmm. measurement, which is still used in a few fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we cannot uh, not be archaic and like obscure in yes. what was then Britain. Uh, <laughs> so what they did is they they used atmospheric power going uphill and going downhill. They just use gravity. Yeah, you just shove them. It's yeah, fine. just shove them. Yeah, it'll roll downhill. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 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 you get sucked upwards uphill towards Dorky and towards I guess the activate Windows notification. The uh, yes. like unsung mm -hmm. co-star of <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> so somebody said that we should introduce it. I have a license. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how to use it. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> You just you take the numbers and you type them into the little prompt. It's easy. You might have to register for like live or something. It's fine. I don't know where to get the number from. I just I had a license for the old computer, which is now like the hard drive of the new computer. And like I, I don't I, I don't I'm know. not I'm, sure that it works that way. Whatever. Anyway, so we switched motherboards too. Microsoft hates that shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's 2,400 yards of pneumatic pipe, right? It ended 560 yards short of the Dalkey station, right? So that led to a couple problems, right? Only like, a third of a mile, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the train would undershoot the platform. <laughs> <laughs> just runs to a stop on air is the Fucking funniest thing out. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like... <laughs> 
Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Just, just start, just start blowing on a sail. <laughs> but no, what they, what actually happened is that then the passengers had to get off and push. <laughs> <laughs> there, oh man, there there was one incident where the pneumatic locomotive was accidentally uncoupled from the train. Oh, good. So literally, which is just like a cabin with a stove in it and a guy. It it wasn't even enclosed. It was just a platform with with a stove on it and a yes, guy and a guy, and <laughs> it shot off at high speed. You know that the the claim is that it made the full journey in about seventy five seconds, just over two miles in seventy five <laughs> yeah, seconds. That's not bad. <laughs> well, that that would probably make it the first uh, railway vehicle to exceed a hundred miles per hour. You know, that beats, uh, <laughs> that beats up. <laughs> Just this fucking raft with a terrified man. <laughs> like I say, you, you don't get this kind of innovation anymore, you know? <laughs> Guy in like a top hat and with like you know, frantically <laughs> on the stove, holding <laughs> on to his monocle, he's just trying to fucking make some toast or something, and he's the first person to be going over land at a hundred miles an hour. As the train's coming apart around him. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be carrying that mental image around for a while. As I said, this is a Looney Tune system. <laughs> yeah, like I, I feel like this is this is one of the like harmless fun ones we do. Unless your next slide is and it killed five hundred people somehow. This one feels much like more like a palate cleanser. <laughs> so, um How many people did it kill? It didn't kill anyone. <laughs> so actually this system, unlike the next ones we're going to talk about, oh boy, was actually very successful. Hmm. Wow! It operated for about ten years, uh, pretty much flawlessly, apart from terrifying one man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apart from putting the fear of God into one person, yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and inadvertently setting a land speed record that would hold for, I guess, like fifty years at least. Yeah, I mean, what the first uh, first steam locomotive to hit a hundred miles an hour. Depending if you're American, you say New York Central nine nine nine. If you're British, you say. You say City of Truro, if you yes, believe you do official say City records, of Truro. you say you absolutely. Flying Scotsman. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck that. No, there was a guy with a stopwatch he had prepared in advance. They had the mileposts. It was City of Truro. We're not hearing <laughs> arguments on this one. All right. So anyway, after uh, 999 did it, yeah, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. I, I, you know, I will give it to City of Truro because I don't like the New York Central. So, oh um, God, New, New York City can go fuck itself. Anyway, that's true. <laughs> An anti-New York podcast. So, yes. anyway, they they replaced the system with conventional steam locomotives in 1855 when they figured out how to make steam locomotives bigger. Uh, yeah, so take all the fun out <laughs> of it. Why don't you? bastards? There was a similar system to this. Installed on the um, Paris to Saint Germain line that that operated until 1860. Saint Germain, man. Saint Germain. Uh, Saint -Germain. I like didn't even want to try. I like didn't even want to try. Why don't they just why, why don't they French. just spell the thing <laughs> why, the way they, just, they pronounce yeah, they're them? They're French. <laughs> <laughs> Every French word has like a hundred million like letters that like you don't need. Meanwhile, here at Bala Kinwood <laughs> Yes, I was going to say. And 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 me with my like my Irish ancestry on the one side standing here in Dune Lara, <laughs> which has five consonants that aren't sp like aren't pronounced. I have my house is built on sand on this one. Language was a mistake. That's true. Yes. <laughs> Why did we try to build a tower Why we try to, to penetrate God itself? <laughs> uh, that was the original engineering disaster right there. That's a hell of a bonus episode. That'll be a bonus <laughs> episode, the Tower of Babel. <laughs> I thought it was pronounced Babel for years and years. I thought it was like the Tower of Babel. Like rhymes with bagel. I, I believe I have fair. heard it pronounced that way, though. Tower of Baby Bell. 
Hey, mm-hmm. that's that's my old stomping grounds. My commute used to be into school from uh, Beckenham Junction Station on there to West Dulwich. Ooh, yeah. This is this is this is personal for me. Uh, it's local content. Yes, mm-hmm. very local. Yes. <laughs> and I'd like to also draw your attention up there to the the museum next to Dulwich Park. I'd like you to attempt to like pronounce the name of that museum. What this guy up here? Yeah, this guy right here. Horny man. <laughs> horny man. The horny man <laughs> museum. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The horn. The 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 horny man museum. Love love a horny man museum. <laughs> So, folks looked at the success of this uh, railway in Ireland, and they said, "All right, we we should apply this technology in you know in in England, right? Because mm. we're the we're we're the colonizers. <laughs> we sh- we should have the good stuff, right? So, right. This is the London and Croydon railway, right? Connecting two two towns with London, big city, Croydon. At that time, at like a small town south of London, that's now just like a suburb of it. Yes." And they ran atmospheric operation between Croydon and Forest Hill. So Croydon is down here, Forest yep. Hill is up here, right? <laughs> yep. Also, also where I um where I grew up, like uh, before my parents moved to Bromley, I I grew up for the, like the first couple of years of my life in Forest Hill. Uh, no memories of it, one way or the other. So cannot help you on this one. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't remember the atmospheric railway either, so Yeah. <laughs> they were gonna, you know, they were like, okay, this is a great way to run trains. We should uh we should build they started by building large elaborate pumping stations like this guy here. Oh, they loved that shit, oh, didn't boy. they? Fucking fucking Victorians. Yeah, the big gothic tower is uh, smokestack. Love it. Oh, oh, I love it. Fuck no, off. I love it. Have, have you seen like the 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 like basil jet sewage pumping stations oh, yeah. that are built like cathedrals? Yes. I, it's beautiful. Just, yes. Oh, more. It, it, more. No, less. Less. It's annoying. <laughs> just shut up. It's it's so fucking like uh, like uh, civic architecture. This is the civic cathedral. Mm. We think that it's very fancy to have like our secular our secular building that we pump the shit water through. Uh, it's, oh no, twee, fuck off. No, I, I I like the I like the the cathedral of shit. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> It really it, it shows that we live in a society. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you if you look at the plan, it just like folds out into a big Joker face for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so the first test run of this system was November first, eighteen forty six. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So the train hit fifty two miles an hour. That's pretty good. Yeah, for eighteen forty six, that's very good. And and silently too. Like, yes. Silently, no, no, no. smelling amazing. Uh, yes. Just fucking gliding through South London. That is smelling like a McDonald's full way. <laughs> oh man, I would love that. Oh, I would be my, so happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking th- that that kind of glory did not return to Penge until Wimpy Burger started closing in the seventies. <laughs> But do do you know about Wimpy Burger? Wimpy Burger is like the last. I I think it's actually American in origin, but we think of it as a British brand because it's so terrible. It's called Wimpy Burger. Yeah, it's called Wimpy Burger, and it like if you Google mm-hmm. like if you Google image of Wimpy Burger, you will see the inside. Uh, they keep. I think there's still a couple left, still running. It is the most depressing food experience you will have in your life. Uh, I highly recommend it. First live show is happening in one if we can find one. Uh, yeah, oh god, it's depressing. Right. <laughs> Brown floors, <laughs> lots of linoleum. So they opened this railway January 16th of, I believe, 1847, right? And at 11 a.m. that day, a crankshaft broke on one of the stationary engines at Croydon. Oh, good. Whoops. Maybe you shouldn't have installed it under a fucking flying buttress, <laughs> then. No, shut up. Uh, shut up. That doesn't do that. Shut up. They still had another engine that was running, though. But then at 7.20 p.m. that day, the other engine broke also. <laughs> yeah, you have to like get in, try to get in under like a gothic vaulted ceiling with a wrench now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the issue, of course, they put the line out of service until February 10th, you know, so the first day didn't go so well. Now, the problem here, of course, is not so much with the atmospheric system itself, it was the bad engines. But 
as they brought the system back into service, they discovered other problems. So, summer of 1846. Okay, so maybe it was... I'm screwing up my dates here. Dates aren't important. Anyway, summer of 1846 uh, was a very hot summer, right? And the Mm -hmm. London and Croydon uh, Railway did not install weather flaps on their pipes. Right. Uh, they, they, did, they, did they spend the weather flap money on <laughs> constructing a fucking belfry for their stationary engine? Yeah, I mean, you got to put the bells somewhere to indicate when the train <laughs> is uh, arriving or departing <laughs> or getting married. Yeah, it has to have fucking gables and it has to have like all of this ornamentation. <laughs> it's very nice, Alice. I we sh- we should have good mm-hmm. public architecture. If, right? if, yes. if it's if it's so nice, why do you only have a, a chalk drawing of it? Like, why did Lon- South London actually kind of mostly pretty decent at preserving Victorian public architecture? Apparently, nobody had any like sentimental attachment to this bitch because it was just like bulldozed immediately. It's probably bombed mm-hmm. by the Nazis. Uh, yeah. Uh, or it's a wimpy <laughs> burger now. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> it's, it's a weather spoon. It's, it, 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 it's four <laughs> different Starbuckses. So. The 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 ambient heat from uh, just the high temperatures melted the tallow mixture without you know the heating element right. Oh, it's gonna smell so good. Yeah, made it difficult to hold a vacuum. Yeah, but made all of like South London and Penge and all of that smell amazing, like permanently, not just when there's a train coming through. Oh yeah, that's probably why they rebuilt the Wimpy Burger there to get that feeling back. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, another another problem, and depending on what source you go by, this either happened or didn't happen, but there was the problem of rats. Um, <laughs> flash image of Pete Buttigieg here. Um, so you, you have to actually do that, you realize. Yeah, I have to do that. On uh, I'll edit it in. The rats got in the pipes. They wanted to eat the tallow, and then, you know, there's a bunch of rats in the mm-hmm. pipe, and then they turn the vacuum pumps mm-hmm. on. And they all got sucked out, or they all got like (laughs) annihilated and turned into viscera when the train went by. Right? Just otherwise gruesomely murdered. Oh no! The guy who has to like stand at the end of the vacuum clean out the rat smoothie. Yeah, (laughs) I'm the guy who cleans out the rat (laughs) viscera. That's that's the only guy who should have his own special union. Is the guy who has to like bolt the cover off and have a fucking stream of rats and rat parts <laughs> just jet outwards <laughs> like a fucking fountain. Oh, God. Oh, oh, and if they're just pressurizing it ahead of the train, the idea of you, you get on this nice quiet train with no noise to mask any of this, and you set off in your stovepipe hat with your best girl on your arm, and it sets off from the station with the noise of a hundred rats just being Crunched. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Yes. Me and my rat smoothie. <laughs> just a oh. geyser of a rat That's how do you keep That's good protein, <laughs> man. How, how do you keep a vacuum in a pipe that is mostly rat blood by yeah. this point? <laughs> You you said this may not have happened. I choose to believe that I it did because I know that, that he, yeah, 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 I, no. I, I, I know deeply in my heart several things uh, like that will never be rebutted by any amount of historical evidence. Uh, I know the Trump P tape is real. I know Jesse Smollett did nothing wrong, and I know oh, that this I thing this killed tweet. <laughs> hundreds of rats a second. That's just being effective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 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 rat annihilates it. <laughs> Alberta's got nothing on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means you could only run this in the province of Alberta. The it's rats, perfect. yeah, yeah, fills up with pigeons instead, <laughs> oh. or beavers or something. What, what what Canadian animal would get in there? <laughs> like raccoons somehow. A small moose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The animals just get wedged and you can't keep vacuum pressure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So those are the summer problems. In the winter, oh, Jesus fuck. You had a different problem. <laughs> in the winter, of course, you know, it rained, right? Hmm. But then it also got cold, which meant the rain froze in the leather. Oh. Which caused it to crack. Tube full of frozen rat blood. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> and that meant, you know, this this leather flap no longer worked especially well to hold the seal because it's all cracked and nasty. It didn't work so good. Right. So, you know, they they abandoned atmospheric operation after the first year. Cowards. And it's like, OK, <laughs> you, you're suggesting that they didn't have enough time to work the kinks <laughs> out of the machine for killing rats. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could have installed the one thing that made the other two systems that we mentioned previously work, but they didn't do that. Their plan was to extend the system, but uh didn't happen. Because hmm. they were cowards. I, I, I see Crystal Palace has its own like branch line there, and this being the 18 well, the mid-19th century, I assume this was also a big deal for like the Great Exhibition thing. Where you had like oh, all of Empire coming to show off its new bullshit, and meanwhile Britain brings to the the ex the exhibition uh, a, a train that like arrives spewing <laughs> rat blood ahead of it. Triumph of the Empire. Oh no! Actually, uh, uh, this branch line I don't think existed at the time. What I did to do this diagram is I just clicked on Forest Hill. Right, and then the overground mm -hmm. line showed up, and I was like, "That's ah, oh, probably okay. sufficient." Yeah, we will talk yeah. about Crystal mm -hmm. Palace later, though. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> anyway, so this this installation failed pretty miserably, uh, which means we should talk about the next installation, where we get to talk about our favorite guy, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Yay! <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> mi mi mixed response there. We're we're an ambivalent podcast, to Brunel. Yeah, we were Brunel agnostic. Brunel Gage. Mm. Brunel Gage. Brunel Gage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there, there was this guy named Isambard King to Brunel. His uh, father was Mark Brunel, who, of course, played for the uh, Washington <laughs> NFL franchise. Um, <laughs> Stick to sports. Sticking to sports. Uh, mm. Isambard King to Brunel had a railway he called the Great Western Railway. Right, everything they did was big and dumb, right? Yes. Hmm. Just like every fucking other thing he did. The Seven Bridge, Brunel Gage, uh, the, the fucking, like, all uh, iron, I forget what it's called, SS fucking whatever, dumb ship. The Great Eastern. Yeah, the dumb <laughs> fucking Great HMS Eastern. HMS Disappointment. It's like the, the, biggest, the biggest ship in the world. From the day it was built to the day it was scrapped, and then they didn't build a bigger one for like another 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah, because building a ship that big with the technology of the time or 30 years later was dumb. El Isambard Kingdom Brunel is the Elon Musk of his day. That's uh, I'll fucking die on that oh. hill. No, Isambard Kingdom Brunel actually got shit done. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I suppose the Seven Bridge is still up. I'll, yeah. I'll give him that much. Yeah, and the the the, the um, Great Western Railway is still there. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, what else did Brunel do? The two of the three boats are gone, but one's still the, there. Uh, the box tunnel. Box tunnel is still there. Yeah, uh, I guess the the Great Western Railway right was built to Brunel gauge. So modern railroads are four mm -hmm. feet eight and a half inches between rails. Brunel uh, gauge uh, was uh, often often not valid for viewers in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or Queensland, which for some reason uses Irish gauge. As you do, yeah. Well, here in uh, here in Philadelphia, we use Pennsylvania trolley gauge for uh, the subway, or excuse me, for the L the and for the trolleys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a subway. It's not a subway. <laughs> I'm so sick of having to explain this to people. It's called an L because <laughs> it's elevated. Ugh. Yeah. Sorry. So, right. Carry on. Brunel <laughs> gauge, instead of being four feet eight and a half inches between the rails. Is seven feet and a quarter inch between the rails. Mm. Yeah, kind of railway megalomania. Like the Nazis tried to do this shit too, of having like a double gauge railroad. Theirs um, was ten foot, I believe. Jesus mm. fuck. And they yeah. never actually built any. No, but something about wanting a big train, like bigger than is necessary or practical. Uh, yeah, it, it attracts that kind of. Megalomania, I guess. Well, Brunel's gauge had the advantage that it it was much smoother at high speeds, right? High speeds, hmm. of course, were like 50, 60 miles an hour. Great Western Railway was built from London to Bristol, right? It, mm -hmm. on, with Brunel gauge. Um, 
Now, by 1844, it had been extended to Exeter, which is up here, right? That's how you pronounce that, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Lo lo lovely town, nice cathedral, uh, good university, all that. Very boring. And then um, the next logical extension was from Exeter to Plymouth, right? Yes. And this was called the South Devon Railway. The terrain was not especially great, right? It was steep grades and sharp corners required to build this railroad. You know, sharp corners for seven foot gauge, of course. Um, now, Brunel visited the Dalkey Railway in Ireland. And he was like, oh, this seems like a good idea. I'll use this. <laughs> Apparently, not on the one day where they just fired a terrified man down. <laughs> He'd probably be tracks. way into that. He'd be like, oh, I can uh, go a lot faster. <laughs> <through."> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 new the new Brunel railway system it transports one terrified person per hour. Yeah, <laughs> so he's like, okay, atmospheric propulsion is a good idea because atmospheric propulsion means you know you can run the trains faster, you can use bigger engines, you can have less fuel consumption, you can have all these great ideas. Like uh, one of the one of the advantages that was thought at the time was a atmospheric railway train cannot derail. Uh, sure. Why not? Because the piston is stuck in the um, in 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 the tube. You have an extra point of thing. Yeah, I yeah. get that. Which means you can run it on tighter corners. Uh, we missed out on such a great baroque railway disaster by the fact that this didn't work. <laughs> like yeah. I feel, I feel like if it had, we would be talking about the like fucking Dawlish Warren Great Train Derailment, where this fucking guy decided, oh, we can just do maximum speed and just sent a passenger train fucking hurtling into the fucking ocean. So it's the first passenger train <laughs> to uh, make it to the other side of the English Channel <laughs> by accident. <laughs> by accident. Yeah. Hover train. So all right, so Brunel was like, we'll use atmospheric propulsion here, too. And he also proceeded to fuck it up. Of course. How dare you. As, as was his want, yes. The first section that was installed was from Exeter down to... Uh, uh, Teenmouth. Teenmouth. Okay, yeah, Teenmouth. Thank you for pronouncing that, so I'm <laughs> saving me some embarrassment there. <laughs> and then that was yeah. later extended on to Newton Abbott, right? Mm hmm Stupid names in Devon, but, yes. you know. This is much a longer installation of atmospheric railway than had been tried before. This is about 20 miles in total, right? Mm. And Jacob Samuda, who designed the Dalky Railway, he was contracted to maintain this system, right? Uh, and they, they came up with a bunch of clever mechanical devices for, like, switches and grade crossings, right? So this is, like, actually the first railway with protected gate grade crossings with gates that would come down when the train huh. went by, but also like flaps that would cover the um, <laughs> the the pipe so that people could bring a wagon across. Oh god, imagine that breaking mm -hmm. and, and your wagon just gets fucking the <laughs> suck. <laughs> 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 just get just get a bunch of like rat viscera just spewed out of your wagon. Yeah. The whole right. horse is sucked in through the oh. tube. Oh. <laughs> it's like a fucking bifid dolphin at every <laughs> level crossing. So this is opened in stages from September 13th, 1847 to March 2nd, 1848. And they ran speed they ran trains at very high speeds with this system. That's 64 miles an hour. Jeez, uh, what year was this again? 1847. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. Jesus. They ran trains at very high speeds when the system was running. Uh huh. Because, once again. The rest of the time, there was a horse stuck in there, and you got to send in a guy <laughs> with a brush. <laughs> I gotta clean like the horse sweep, viscera. Yeah. <laughs> you got to sweep that for like the other 18 miles of track. But uh, once again, they decided. We're gonna skip the weather flaps. Oh, of course. Right? Yes, you do. So, ha had the same problems as the London and Croydon. The leather well, froze and cracked in the winter and dried out and stiffened in the summer. There's a couple of things here. You, you'll notice on this map that um, Exeter uh, is next to a big river called the X. Uh, and it, there's a very silty river. There's a lot of, uh, like, you can see there's a lot of mud, there's a lot of dirt. Um, and even even still today, the the seawall at Dawlish, uh, it's a beautiful railway. If you want to if you want to visit, I highly recommend it. 
Um, but that rail that rail line, modernized as it is, gets fucking destroyed and fully like compromised to a permanent end about once a year when a big storm rolls through and it just washes the whole thing into the ocean. So I'm imagining that, but with for an open tube filled with horse guts. Yes, <laughs> and I, I'm not picturing it doing so mm-hmm. well on the reliability front. Also, is that a town called Chudley? Ch- Chudley. If you look, yes. yeah. If you look, like, yeah, at home of the Chuds, <laughs> the fight <Home> Chuds. Samuda, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who who has the maintenance contract, recommends to the board. He's like, hey, put put in a weather flap. Put put a weather flap on. You'll be fine. And and they're like, nah, mm-hmm. we're not going to pay for that. <laughs> so Bernil tries to correct the problem by, you know, getting crews to go in and dump a bunch of whale oil on the weather flap to, you know, lubricate <laughs> it, right? What? <laughs> he so he's just like oiling a big like twenty mile long thing of leather. Well, this didn't work. Y- you don't say. You know, the weather flap was the thing they should have done and they decided not to do that. And then, since they hadn't installed a telegraph system, that meant that the big stationary steam engines that were in big buildings like this guy here, which is now apparently a uh, garden center, that they have to pump to a timetable as opposed to pumping to the actual location of the train. So if a train was running late... This is a big steam engine, too. You can't just start and stop them, right? You've got to quite literally warm up the engine, right? This is a huge fucking stationary steam engine which <laughs> occupied a whole building and generated 65 horsepower. That's <laughs> efficient. God damn. That's what we like to see. <laughs> I mean, it makes it makes a lot more sense if you know that the precursors to locomotive-driven railways were just a tramway where you have a single horse pull a cart down some rails, but Jesus Christ. We have a whole building, it's like having 65 horses. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the same number of horses that were stuck at the end of the pipe last <laughs> month. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what the horsepower measures. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this was this was an early innovation in the thing that makes railways still terrifying to me, the rail that kills you instantly if you touch it. Uh we wouldn't we wouldn't do that again until uh until electricity, really. This is the law of conservation of horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you you feed the horse into a closed system. <laughs> Incredible work. Oh god, imagine if this is the one that takes all three of us out. <laughs> This has definitely been one of our dumber episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no one can say that we just read the Wikipedia page because the Wikipedia page isn't a one paragraph summary of the facts and a seven scroll deep monologue about horse viscera. <laughs> oh, God. So, <laughs> giant, Get it together, Justin. You can do this. This giant building, this giant building, with the 65 horsepower engine in it, it wound up consuming about three times more coal than expected, and about <laughs> just over the amount of coal that they would consume with uh, regular steam locomotives, right? Oh, cool. Okay. So by <laughs> August of 1848, Brunel was like, we should just use regular steam locomotives, guys. I, I love the idea that we're we're having to do all of this really marginal stuff to like try to end climate change now because we're just content to tinker around the edges and we can be like, oh, you can have like a hybrid vehicle or you can have like a high mileage internal combustion engine. And back in the day, you could just be like, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna run this steam engine all day, twenty four seven, to pump air into a tube that just leaks right back out to generate sixty five horsepower for nothing. 
Yes. Just yes. 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 I uh. <laughs> So beautiful. Uh, shortly after Brunel recommends the system should be abandoned, Samuda comes into a, a shareholders meeting and he just fucking lays into him <laughs> for not properly maintaining anything or not allow- allowing him to maintain anything. And um well they decide mm. to abandon the system anyway. And they replaced it with steam trains. He got us like twelve angry men moment and it didn't like help at all. Yeah. Sucks. No, it didn't suck. That was the problem. Uh, this was the end of the sucking. Mm. Yes. But this was not the end of atmospheric traction, right? It would take a while though to come back, so uh after this there were a couple of systems where they sort of tried uh, the system I mentioned earlier, which is a whole big train powered by air pressure that runs in a big tube, right? So this is the mm-hmm. Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway. This is 1864. Right? Ah. So they didn't, like, come to the, the, the Grace Exhibition just behind <laughs> this wave of rap guts. <laughs> But in, in, instead, you just like shot. Yeah, <laughs> you just shot the train through the tunnel like a, a big fucking like cork through a bottle. Great. Yes. The 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 wave of rat blood comes behind it rather than in front. The world's shittiest wake. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how that's smart. That's how you don't terrify the passengers because they can't see the giant you know tsunami of rat <laughs> blood behind you. Right. Mm. That's actually how all <laughs> modern subway trains work. It's, that's why they don't let you look out of the back. Yes. So this was a half mile pneumatic railway. It ran from one end of Crystal Palace Park to the other. Which is not a long way. Yeah. Yeah. It was a demonstrator line. There's almost no traces of it left today. There's not a lot of information on it. There's no trace of fucking cri- of the Crystal Palace left because that shit burned down. Well, uh, the foot co- the football club is still around. Uh, you know, well, depending on how you uh, define around, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's no there's no Crystal Palace. There's no nothing. They they got rid of everything because they. Yeah. Suck. There's, there's there's a big there's a big antenna in Crystal Palace Park, and that's it. L- love a big antenna. I think it's like the second highest freestanding one in Europe. Damn, it's, it's big. <laughs> it's big. I'll give it that. It's it's not quite as cool as the like the the rat train though. And then I, I do like that little flap too. Oh, oh that's flap, adorable! Flap around. Oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then the next uh, the next attempt at this is something called beach pneumatic transit in New York City. Right. Oh, it takes you to the beach. Fine. Yeah. Uh, it went about three hundred feet. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> this, uh, this was to demonstrate both uh, new tunneling methods for a New York City subway system. And pneumatic propulsion of trains, right? This was 1870, well before any actual subways were dug. Uh, there were only a couple of elevated trains at that point. They were all steam hauled. So, you know, it took you through the tunnel a whopping 300 feet out and then 300 feet back. Um, <laughs> it's adorable, though. It's so cute. It was supposed to be a larger project, but uh, Boss Tweed at Tammany Hall uh, killed oh. that project. <laughs> So it had, we love it was, some old-fashioned corruption. Yes. So it was built entirely in secret. <laughs> <laughs> so after it had been demonstrated to the public in 1870, finally permission was granted by the city for expansion in 1873, but immediately the bottom fell out of the stock market, right? And it was closed and abandoned. Oh. I do like the back in the day you could just be like, yeah, we built a railway yeah. in secret. Can you approve more <laughs> railway? I like that they had like big like Greco-Roman statues. Yes, like no. that. Yeah. yeah. Plus the train just looks like this barrel. You know, I really like that. I like the like wooden siding on there. Oh yeah. And then it was uh so it was closed abandoned, right? They rediscovered it in 1912. Huh. While they were excavating the uh Brooklyn Manhattan Transit uh Broadway line, right? And the whole thing was basically within the site that's currently occupied by City Hall Station on the N, R, and W trains today. Mm. They t- they tapped into this uh, vacuum line and just like <laughs> the, the wave of rats just came at them, killed. Close it up. Close it back up. Close it back up. Close it back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Once the worst of the rat passes you by, then you've got a nice new tunnel. And that's how they built City Hall Station. 
But hmm. now, what about the real rats above ground? Am I right, fellas? Oh, oh. got him. <laughs> Mayor Bloomberg, sponsor our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is, there's a rumor that there's a small portion still intact that if you find the right manhole, you can get into. The, the remnants of the system are not very extensive. It's not like in Ghostbusters too. <laughs> um, mm. That that documentary we love. Yes, I, I would like to like put out for discussion the idea that once a year. Uh, Mike Bloomberg like has the manhole open for him and goes and sits on the tiny train that carries mm -hmm. him like twenty five feet, and then comes back up and is like, "Hmm, yes." I mean, the, the the one thing that like Mayor Bloomberg did was he was a regular subway rider. Like De Blasio doesn't do that. Now I've said mm. something positive about Bloomberg. Give us your I'm, money. Give us your money. <laughs> yeah, I should, shouldn't have said that. So both this and the Crystal Palace Railway operated on the same principle. It's a big railroad car and a pneumatic tube. Neither of them works well enough for commercial operation. Atmospheric propulsion becomes a solution in search of a problem after mm. third rail and overhead electrification is developed, right? Yeah, just kind of a novelty. So this is not the this is not the last application of vacuums to, you know, rail transportation, right? Which means we have to talk about the vacuum tube train. Oh, that's a <laughs> sick drawing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really like this one. So, uh, all right. So, Robert Goddard, who is a, uh, was, was a famous rocket scientist, right? He, he wrote a short story when he was in college called The High Speed Bet. This is 1904. It was published in 1909 in Scientific American, along with an editorial critique, which was called The Limit of Rapid Transit, right? And this is the first recorded conception of the idea of a vacuum tube train. Mm. So here, what is this thing, right? What's the thing that's going on here? So when you have a train, right, any kind of train, even an atmospheric railway, you have a lot to overcome in terms of forces to to operate at very high speeds, right? Hmm. You know, there's wheel wear. There's there's you know the amount of power you can supply to the motors. But at some point, the biggest factor is air resistance, right? Right. Yeah, which is which is why we love those uh, like the Metroliner or those Soviet uh, diesel locomotives that are just like a big brick that have absolutely no aerodynamics to them at all. I always uh, thought like a fully loaded, like a big long manifest freight train going eighty miles an hour hmm. with like two hundred cars, which are all different shapes. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest fuck you to aerodynamics <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah, you, ju you just look at the wind tunnel schematics of that, and it's just all red. <laughs> yeah. But the idea with the vacuum tube train is that you know air resistance is the biggest problem. What if you got rid of the air? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a fuck you to aerodynamics, but in a different way. You just yes. like, well, we just lop off the first two syllables, and now it's just dynamics. What now, <laughs> motherfucker? This is actually like something I don't understand. If there's no air, wh wh why is this streamlined? Wh um, why is it not just a blunt end? <laughs> yeah, why can't you run a like Soviet T E M? through this. Yeah. It, mm. So a vacuum tube train is usually or a vac train if you want to be, you know, one of those a cool, cool a cool term. Yeah. Usually a magnetic levitate le magnetic levitation train or a maglev train that runs in a vacuum tube at very high speed, right? Mm. But this a was, maglev train in atmosphere is already very high speed, right? Yes. yes. Like you, you you can take the maglev in Shanghai and it gets you from one place to another at like 200 miles an hour, right? I think that one tops out at like 250 or something like that. The Japanese one they're developing right now tops out at like 300 something. Mm. Um, so the vacuum tube train was developed at the Research and Development Corporation in the 1970s, or that's where they really did sort of engineering Rand studies Corp. on. Yeah, Rand. Yep. Mm. Uh, they they took time out of like uh, making up punch cards for Robert McNamara <laughs> to say that the Vietnam War was going well to do. Uh, what if we just sucked all of the air out of a big tunnel? Yeah, they finally they they, they did some uh, they did some suck. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs>
So there have been many proposals for this over the years, uh, some of which got a whole bunch of traction, actually. So what we're looking at here is a render for what was going to be called Swiss Metro, Mm. right? Which is the idea they were going to dig vacuum tube tunnels from like major Swiss cities between each other. And they would go, you know, you'd have this fast ass train. (laughs) Given the uh, sun, I I want to know what the Swiss know that we don't, that they're just like, oh, we have to dig (laughs) all of these tunnels under our country for some reason. Don't don't ask any questions. Because they have mountains. Ah. It's all yeah. mountains is the thing. It's it's definitely the mountains and not like the same thing that led to every Swiss apartment building having to have a bunker until like last year. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not worried about this at all. It's because it's because all the Swiss have guns, so they're all terrified mm. of each other secretly. <laughs> That's true. Although they have the they, they have the Chris Rock kind of gun control, where uh, after their like first kind of mass shooting, they kept letting you have the gun at home, but they strictly controlled the bullets. I always liked that idea. I always liked that idea. Yeah. So so like if you do national service, which almost all Swiss men do, you get your SG five fifty two uh, at home in a closet, but you get one sealed can of ammunition. And then I guess you get the order to open that as the Germans roll over the border again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, if, if if the Germans rolled over the border here, I, I would be pretty unhappy. I would definitely. Yeah, mm. I I too would be pretty unhappy. <laughs> sure, not again, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so other ideas uh, are have been pretty outlandish for how to use these vacuum tube trains, like. One idea which got uh, a documentary on a show called Extreme Engineering in like the early 2000s was, you know, let's have a submerged floating tunnel under the Atlantic Ocean oh, cool. from New York to London, right? Well, if, if, we, if we can do England to Northern Ireland, why not? I mean, you, you would also need like some kind of floating doohickey for that, because otherwise you're, you're just trying to anchor foundations into a seabed made exclusively of bombs. Yeah, no, this is fine. In, in, in each case, we'll just like send train after train into like a, a, a flooded tunnel that goes nowhere. Yeah, I'm great. sending in more trains. <laughs> <laughs> so the the idea is, you know, you would build this long submerged floating tunnel, um, and you would send large, you know, trains at a high frequency. And, you know, using vacuum tube maglevs, you can top out at 10, 15,000 miles an hour. Oh, cool. And that gets you and that gets you end to end in about 45 minutes, right? You, your, your acceleration is limited. Your top speed is limited by passenger comfort at that point. You know, you can't accelerate too fast or everyone's going to. You know, fucking hurl. Become yeah. We or worse. We we have moved in the realm of like fucking around with uh, with pressure and railways. From we kill a bunch of rats and like turn we liquefy the rats to we liquefy the passengers. And you just like open the doors at the other end, and there's just like this mulch of commuters. Efficiency. We fulfill the Victorian prophecy of um, mm-hmm. you know, high speed sucking the air out of your lungs. Finally. <laughs> These ideas are outlandish. They're not. They're not impossible. They can be done with modern engineering. It would take a lot of money and a lot of effort, which we can't even muster up to like uh, stop all of us from broiling to death. But we're going to do it for like the sake of a forty-five minute commute from London to New York. Sure. I mean, the thing is, you got to do something about air travel eventually. Sure. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's called boats. It's called boats. I do like boats. Boat would probably oh, be like more practical mm-hmm. than this. Yeah, or, like fucking like I don't know any of the like uh, long haul uh, like electric, mostly gliders covered in solar panels planes that people have like been fucking around with. I don't know. I think there should be the. Uh, I, I think we should just do the vacuum tube train. This is my. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea. I think we should do it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Cosine. Bring, no, 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 no. Bring, bring back, bring back flying boats. I want an electric flying boat, and I want to land in New York Harbor. That would also be cool. Yeah, right. It'd be cool as hell. The thing is, we have the we have this wild idea for vacuum tube trains, which mm-hmm. you know is technically feasible, mm-hmm. although it's, it's a long time in the future. And then we have this guy who shows up named Elon Musk, oh, and he decides, <laughs> let's take the. Let's take the vacuum tube train and make it dumber and worse. Yes. Of course. course. Yes. Let's make the energy sword from Halo for some reason. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the vibe I get off of this concept art. It's so, like, bungee circa, like, 2000. It's, so, Elon Musk's uh, atmospheric railway is, you know, the Hyperloop, right? And the Hyperloop, the idea is, rather than doing a full vacuum, we have slightly less than a full vacuum, right? And in order to compensate for that, the front of the vehicle is a big air compressor turbine, right? Ah, oh, cool. Um, that funnels the air into a tiny pipe that then exhausts out the back. Mm. And then there's other other factors here, like instead of having a big train, yeah, there's a tiny pod, right? Of course, to encourage like independence and innovation. Mm -hmm. Whomst among us has not wanted to be in the middle part of a running jet engine? Oh, it would make your commute exciting. Yeah, yeah. with like eight <laughs> other people. The other idea is that, you know, you, you run these pods at like ridiculous frequencies, like once every 30 seconds sure. through your mostly evacuated tube. And despite these very high frequencies, the cap capacity is still absurdly low. Like much lower than any rail line because the pods are so small, as described by Mr. Elon Musk. If 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 you wanted a hyperloop system that had the same capacity as like a subway train with a thousand people in each train that arrives every five minutes, you need a pod arriving every two and a half seconds. But it's the, this is the thing we've come back to Mecca or the Ganges or the Western Wall again mm -hmm. of there being too many people and it being too crowded all the goddamn time. Ah. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, I mean, the thing is also, this doesn't have a weather flap, which means it's doomed to failure. Th this that is, is true. true, yes. Like, how are you going to protect all of the tallow? <laughs> the other thing is these pods are also optionally supposed to be able to take, as opposed to eight passengers, they can take one automobile. Mm. You can drive your Tesla model, uh, model Grimes into the thing, right? Yes. Ugh. And it, it, like you can, you can, I guess, drive back out uh, from the one on ramp uh, along with everybody else who like drove their Tesla off two point six seconds before you. Oh, that's that's different. That's the that's the regular loop, not the hyper loop. Don't you feel foolish? Oh, okay, I'm I'm behind the loops. Yeah, yeah no, I, 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 this is... the regular loop came after the hyper loop, right? Of, um, of course. Yeah, no, it's 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 very confusing. So it, it, it's like the franchise. It's like the horror movie franchise Cube. There's <laughs> there's Cube, and then there's Cube Two, Hypercube. God. <laughs> I think there was also Cube Three, which I think they had the like. I think they just called it Cubed. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, three. I guess. <laughs> that, that's clever. I like it. Mm, yeah. So anyway, this system is proclaimed to be cheaper to construct than high speed rail, which it clearly is not. It's uh, Elon Musk claimed it would be cheaper to buy a ticket for the Hyperloop than high-speed rail, which it clearly is not because of basic capacity constraints. This concept has found a whole shitload of investment capital. There's a lot of private companies pursuing the idea. Um, mm. Listen once again. Listen to Trash Future for an understanding of why our financial system works this way. But suffice it to say, we have like I don't know maybe. A year at most before the bill comes due on all of this, and it's going to be interesting. We now have the 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 wonderful situation where governments are giving money to study Hyperloop yeah. seriously. Uh, I believe just in in Missouri recently, they they just released uh, several million dollars for a, a, a in in tax credits for a potential Hyperloop that would go from mm, fucking stupid. No other pressing issues in yeah. Missouri. Obviously, uh, no. The, the main yeah. thing they want is a Hyperloop from Kansas City to St. Louis. Um, uh, of course, of course. I'm just looking here at like list of U.S. territories by educational attainment, and finding Missouri down here in like the mid to bottom tier, and being like, yeah, you could build like I don't know, maybe some schools or something, um, or or you could like have your your hyperloop. You get like six guys with shovels and like a yeah. weekend, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you could like shave. Uh, probably two or three hours off the existing Amtrak train that runs between St. Louis and Kansas City. Uh, but, you know, wh what do I know? Uh, 
But those six guys with shovels aren't cool, is the thing. And Elon Musk is cool. And if you don't think he's cool, you're, you know, a nerd. And we can't convince Elon Musk to pick up a shovel and do any work, obviously. God, no. No. Yeah, so we got government agencies doing studies in the Hyperloop, and of course this this entire thing is a grift and sort of, you know, a way to prevent investment into any actual public transportation that works, you know, because Elon Musk wants to sell more cars. <laughs> yeah, hi, hi, Hyperloop is dumb. I will go into this in more detail at some point, I'm sure. You have a whole we video, have a video about going it. into no, that's yes. about the regular loop. Wow. Oh, for fuck's sake. We cannot the keep loop. our loops. There's there's the regular loop and the hyperloop. The hyperloop is <sighs> the one that runs in a vacuum-ish. The regular loop is the one that moves cars under cities. It's just, it, I, I can't keep this, mm-hmm. these ideas straight either. All of them are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Here's something which is surprising, though, which is the, the original atmospheric railway concept has come back. So this is something huh. called Aeromovel. This is a modern atmospheric railway system that came out of Brazil. I can't get any, get any good information as to how exactly it works because the website was entirely in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> and also it looked like it came out of um, uh, like 1998. We're, we're going to get a bunch of YouTube comments featuring the word caralho now. Uh, so looking forward to that. I'm assuming the like the concrete bit underneath the the train and the rail that it's riding on contains the tube. Yes, and you can also As- see like uh this ducting here, which ah. I also assume assists it in some way. Um, <laughs> this this is installed in only a couple of uh, locations, um, which um you know I, I I believe this one is this one is. At a theme park in Jakarta, in Indonesia, but this is a this is a modern atmospheric railway hmm. that exists. Well, I, I guess I guess it's a lot easier when you have continuous, uh, more or less uninterruptible ways of generating that power and doing that that work to create the vacuum than uh, the, the the like building full of horse guts. Yes. <laughs> you can use, uh, like, I don't know, nuclear power or any number of things. So it's, I guess it's not that weird now. It's just inefficient, uh, which I guess you don't mind for the novelty on a theme park thing. I think there's also one that's an airport people mover. Ah, so like, it, it, what? You, why is it always airports <laughs> and theme parks where you like do these fucking novel things? Glasgow Airport is getting individual people moving pods after having cancelled a railway link because it was Jesus too expensive. Fuck. Is that like the the fucking PRT in Heathrow? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna put in. <laughs> they, they were gonna put in a tram line, and then they decided they were gonna stop the tram line halfway. No, fuck that. That's crazy. <laughs> you, you, you have to get the tram to Paisley, which is the nearest city south of Glasgow, and then change to a PRT that takes you in your personal little private wanky pod to the airport. Because I think it's the largest airport in the UK that you can only reach by road right now. Oh um, my god. I know, it sucks so bad. It's got a decent bus there, but like we we almost invested in the rail link, and to the point where there is train simulated train simulated DLC of it because they made it as driver training, and then they cancelled it. Oh my god! So cool. Just build a fucking train. Build, build, rebuild the Glasgow Airport rail link. So we came full circle. There's mm. there's still an atmospheric railway in operation. There's a new modern atmospheric <laughs> railway, and if you want to learn more about it. Learn Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna learn Portuguese to. Con- we have to conduct a rat audit of this system. Uh, we 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 need to like determine the extent of their rat problem. We need to see if there's an Indonesian guy who has to like sweep all of the rats out and give him our support. <laughs> I'm the guy who wipes down yep. the rat guts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really these are good protein. I don't know what your problem is. Yeah. <laughs> rat you, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> That's an engineer. You know you success. can just you, you know you can just squeeze the rat with your hands. Yeah, but this is more theatrical and therefore better. <laughs> I feel like it might start biting me. <laughs> you just get two big plates. It's easy. Yeah. Welcome to the hydraulic press channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instantly kicked off of YouTube for their rat episodes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Before they could even release the horse one. <laughs> we came for a full circle. Next yep. episode will be about the, be about the uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Oh, finally. Yep. I guess, uh, does anyone have any commercials? Uh, no, I did mine up front. Ah, very nice. Uh, you, you can follow me on the Twitter at, at do not eat O2 <laughs> because yes. I was tragically killed recently. So, um, yes, this is, this is my from beyond the grave account. <laughs> I also want to say yeah. shout out to, um, big mood energy on Twitter, mm. who is doing a YouTube series called the failure and success of great American transit, uh, which is a city skyline series, sort of like uh mine which you know is, is is talking about real life urban issues she's focusing primarily on public transportation uh it's very good she just released the first uh episode everyone should go check it out if you enjoy the stuff i do also the stuff i do is still going on um i've gotten a whole bunch did you of model that lion yet oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no i i still i i need to do something about it. i'm not looking forward to it I've I've yeah. got I, I'm I'm close enough to where I'm going to have all the models in game probably by the end of mm. next week. I hope. Oh, um, the end of this week. some good some good. Well, there's your problem news. Uh, our art for our forthcoming shirt, which you will be able to wear on your human body, is Yay! done. Uh, we are just now. We 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 have only to bully Justin into talking yes, to, talk the to the union, union printing printer guy. guy, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then hopefully we will have a shirt for you to like cover your nakedness with. Yes, it's very good. We're very excited for it. You can finally, it, you you can finally cover your shame. Um, yeah, you, you won't keep getting kicked out of restaurants now for not wearing a shirt because you'll have a shirt. Yes. Um, it, it, it is a joke that will only make sense to you if you uh, subscribe to the Patreon. So you should do that too. Do yeah, that I was now. about to say, yeah, subscribe to the Patreon and listen to the van episode. Then you'll want to buy you'll the shirt. I'll also understand what the and, hell we're talking mm -hmm. about. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, this yes. is true. Yeah, and then um, you know, and if you don't want to, if you don't want a shirt, you you can you can cut the sleeves off, and then it's a tank That's actually top, what I'm gonna do. Which is kind <laughs> of, to be fair, that's what I'm gonna that's do. That's kind of that's kind of appropriate for yeah, the artwork. Yeah, exactly. I think. It's scumbag yeah, season, bud. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it pairs so well with like, oh, I don't know, well, an eagle's cap for one. Go birds. Uh, but also like cargo shorts. No, Go birds. no, uh, I, don't, I do not wear cargo shorts. I just wear gym shorts. I wear basketball shorts, despite not being very athletic. <laughs> mm. I am an expert on this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the shoe situation like with that shirt? Do you I'm think I'm wearing Sperry's right now because I'm a class trader? Ah, uh, uh, wear boat shoes. Yeah, look, yeah leave me alone. <laughs> how come they make boat shoes but no train shoes? And how come you uh, you drive on the parkway and you park in the driveway? Uh, What's the oh. deal with airline food? These these questions and more should be answered in future. Bonus episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, goodbye. Yeah. yeah that was about, that was about, oh, awkward was about silence. Say, awkward silence. I, we probably won't actually do that bonus episode. All right. So, uh, ha having done that, I believe we are all we were all done all with done. doing podcasting, yeah. right? Yes. yes. Permanently. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's it. Seventeen right. episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah, we, yeah. we we nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Bye everyone forever. Bye, Bye. everybody. <laughs> <laughs>